Hey, hi everyone. Good evening to you. I hope that you all are doing well. I am hopping on because I got some happy mail today. And one of them is another Our Daily Bread. I know, like, am I going to stop? Um, guys, I get these off of eBay um, for like $5 from Thrift Books on eBay. So ch please check it out. Like if a book is in good condition, it might be $5. If it's an acceptable condition, it might be $4. If it's in very good or excellent, it might be 5 6 or $7, whatever. But this particular one came from Jamaica, right? And it is practically brand new. Now, obviously, they didn't give me the measurements of the book or I didn't have my glasses on. I don't know what the deal was, but I did not realize that this book was going to be this small as in comparison to the leather ones. But that's fine. It, it's fine. I love this special edition. I think she said it was. Um... Uh, 2023 uh, annual edition so it's not like this one like the our daily bread devotional collection this one is supposed to be a special special edition um, I definitely would have to wear my glasses to read this little thing um, this is nice absolutely nice now I paid $13 no $11 for this um, and yeah it came all the way from Jamaica so this is nice. Um, it's too heavy for me to keep in my purse. Um, because my purse is like the one place I don't have a Bible. You know? Um, so. But this would be like too heavy. Way too heavy. Um, I actually cleaned out my handbag. Um, uh, storage where I keep my handbags. And I ended up donating a really pretty pink, um, <laughs> look y'all, look there's Cappy, oh my gosh, it just never fails. She must have heard me recording from her little house, you know, the little, <laughs> I'm telling you guys, she was in her house in that little, you know, cabinet in the kitchen. That I showed you that I made a little bed for her. Pretty little comforter. It's so nice. If you guys ever get a chance to look at my um, ASMR uh, videos, you'll scroll down and see Gappy inside of the kitchen cabinet that we turned into a house for her. <laughs> so how, how, how do they know? How do they know? They are the smartest things. Oh, my gosh. The, you know, Egyptians worshipped cats. I see why. Oh my gosh, because they are the smartest things. Cats, dogs, animals, they're they're smarter than we give them credit for. All right. Well, anyway, um, she loves it when I fan a book like this and she'll put her face right up to it and the pages will just hit her in the face. And she loves that. Look. This woman is a trip. Oh my gosh, Gappa. Oh, Gappa. Oh my gosh. All right, y'all. All right, so um, I wanted to share that with you. And again, if you're interested in having these nice, thick collections, you know, definitely check out eBay for that. Um, this one also came in. This is the green one that I thought was had already came, but didn't. And that was because I, again, I didn't have my glasses on. So. Um, but this is the Our Daily Bread, and it is, oh, it's, I love the feel of this. It's so soft, guys. It really is. And this one I only paid like $5 for. Isn't that beautiful? So I keep them up on the shelf. As you can see, let me see if I can zoom in. Um, right there. See the, the brown and the purple? So the green will just... You know, I'll just pop the green right on top of that. And that will be just like a little collection place for me um, to keep my daily breads. So, yeah, my extra ones. 
because I got one in the let us see, I've got one in the bathroom, and Gary has all of his, so I'm just going to keep them up there on the shelf. All right, so um, let's go ahead and open up this one and see what God has to say to us today. So how are your, how is your day going? How was your weekend? Oh, my goodness. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> how was your weekend? It's Monday. I, see that, guys? I'm telling you... Well, you know, if God didn't shorten the days, no flesh would survive. So I'm glad that time is going by fast because the sooner that we, that, you know, time goes by fast, then the sooner we can get home. And I am very, very much looking forward to going home, right? That's where our family is. That's where we belong. That's home. And that's where I want to go. Um, and yeah, I wish I could, I hope to take some things with me. Oh, Lord, I have no sense. All right, so I hope you guys are doing good. Let me see where we're going to stop. Because I love him. Okay, so that is what we're going to read tonight. Lord, thank you for your word. And let your word touch our hearts, Lord. Liquify my words so that they melt into the hearts of those who hear it. Liquify your words, Lord, so that those who hear it from me are touched and blessed. All right. Here we go. Let me get this to bend back a little bit. So other than that, guys, while I'm bending this back, I've been doing a lot of scrapbooking. I've been, I've actually got mo all of my projects completed. All of my Planner Anonymous books are completed. All of my um, archives are completed. And my stash of supplies have been decorated. All they have to do is be put to good use. Everything is done. So um, it's just a matter of just, I finished my brush writing for the month of May. I finished my Bible study for Sheree McGinnis and um, May Tipton for the month of May. And as you all know, that message was wait on the Lord, perseverance. Um, and uh, so if you guys saw that, I hope that you all were blessed. Um, now, right beside me here, let me, I'll show, whoops, we don't want to lose that. Hold on. Okay, because I love him. In this plastic bag is nothing but things that I bought for the creation of my junk journal. I went on eBay, I mean, at Amazon and found all of these, um, some things. Some of these things I already had, but everything in here is the junk journal project. <laughs> and as you can see, this is definitely new. Um, this is all beautiful lace trim. So I didn't do a unboxing with that because it, it was just only like four bags worth of different types of lace and floral lace and different things. So I'll show you guys that, but let's get into this word. All right. It says here, because I love him and it, they say, read revelations 22, 12 through 21. Yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come Lord Jesus. <laughs> Revelation 22, 20. All right. I'm going to stop right here. God is good and nothing happens by coincidence, happenstance, whatever you want to call it, especially in my life. I'm telling you, I can tell you some stories where God just constantly makes his presence known to me, you know, um, to the point where, you know, I have no choice but to give him glory. And like I said, one day I will tell you some stories and I mean, recent things also that have happened where um, it was nobody but God. And um, I'm grateful for my relationship with God. It's not the perfect relationship and it's all his doing. And I am grateful for that. So I am no one special, trust me, but I am grateful for the way that the Lord deals with me, how he speaks to me, how he moves through my life, how he so strongly makes his presence known. It makes me feel loved. It makes me feel special and it makes me feel worthy. 
And I'm grateful, extremely grateful. And yes, I am coming soon. Now, be, see, he turned to this page, y'all, not me. Did I just not say a few seconds ago that time is flying so fast? Just a minute ago, it was Friday. It was Saturday. And now it's sun, It's Monday. And what did I just say to you? Well, we can't get upset. You know, time flies and it can be an inconvenience and so forth and so on. But the sooner, if God does not speed up time, if the earth's spinning on its axis, skipping seconds and, and so forth and so on, which has been scientifically discovered, okay, since 2012, I think it was since 2012, time has, um, the, the earth has speeded up in its rotation. So every miracle that God has, he has a scientific method of getting it through, you know, to us. It's not like just magic, you know, it, it has a scientific method um result or whatever ha however you want to put it um so the proof is there no flesh would survive if he does not speed up time i'm hurry i want to go home i'm ready to go home um and for to open up and see yes i am coming soon amen well come lord jesus come on hurry up we're waiting on you you know and that is no coincidence. So I am really curious to see what this is going to be about. Now, before I get into it, I'm going to share something with you. Hold on. Um, we had, um, hold on, a um, gentleman who came over our house recently to do work on our uh, dryer vents and I think he was a Muslim guy he was he was definitely Middle Eastern and he noticed my husband's tattoos and he noticed my tattoos and he wasn't impressed by them um it wasn't something spiritual that happened usually especially with my husband he always meeting people from Israel He's always meeting people from different countries and they always um, praise God over his tattoos. Um, I could tell you some beautiful stories where people who were um, feeling sad in their faiths would see my husband's tattoos and their faith would be increased. Honestly, you know, with people from Israel in terms of people in the United States. And my husband's tattoos are in ancient, holy Hebrew, the type of Hebrew that is not even used anymore. And people from Israel and so forth will say to him, you know, oh, my God, you believe in, you know, Yeshua Mashiach and you believe in this and you believe in that. And and oh, my gosh, what what powerful words do you realize what you have tattooed on your arm? You know, and there have been times where he has, they've glorified God right there at the airport. Well, he's not at the airport right now, but anymore, he's, he'll go back. But right now he's at a different port. Um, so God has a way of just moving and just using you where you are. And um, many, many years ago, I would say this was back. Oh, 15 years ago, I got this tattoo right here, which is in the holiest Hebrew you can come up with. This is ancient Hebrew and it reads from, it doesn't read, it reads the opposite from us. You know how we read left to right, you know, just right to left. But what this says is, and you're reading it backwards because of my arm, but it says Marin Natha. And I don't know if I ever shared this with you guys before. I might have, but you know, my brain is like freezes and it's like, come Lord, come. And it's the command form of come Lord come meaning come quickly get us out of here we can't take it anymore we don't want to be here anymore Maranatha look it up google it and um there's even some channels on YouTube called Maranatha now there's also the whole one word Maranatha just one word Maranatha not Maranatha and Maranatha is 
you is is a is a different form of um telling of the lord coming the lord is coming i guess you could say it that way the lord is coming he's coming he's coming soon he's coming for us and then the other one is the lord is the command where you're literally commanding the lord to come and i was in great distress at that time in my life and i got that tattoo to look at and to reflect on um to get me through you know panic attacks and anxiety attacks and and just to get me through hard times where you know I, I need to look at something I need to see something you know and I could just look at my arm you know and my arm would would say everything so anyway to see this yes I am coming soon amen come Lord Jesus um this is beautiful and thank you Lord um, so again, God is not a God of coincidence. Everything has purpose and timing and meaning in your life. Everything, everything. So take nothing for granted and always be looking and listening for the Lord to speak and to move in your life. Because when you're looking for him, you will find him. And that I can promise you. So I'm going to go ahead and get into this and see what the Lord has for us tonight. The day before my husband was to return home from a business trip, my son said, Mom, I want daddy to come home. I asked him why, expecting him to say something about the presents that his daddy usually brings him back or that he missed playing ball with him. But with solemn seriousness, he answered, I want him to come back because I love him. All right, let me get you into camera here. Okay. His answer made me think about our Lord and his purpose to come back. I am coming soon, Jesus says in Revelation 22 and 20. I long for his return, but why do I want him to come back? Is it because I will be in his presence away from sickness and death? Is it because I am tired of living in a difficult world? Or is it because when you've loved him so much for your life, so much of your life, that when he has shared your tears and your laughter, when he has been more real than anybody else, you want to be with him forever. I'm glad that my son misses his daddy when he's away. And it would be terrible if he didn't care at all about his return or if he thought it would interfere with his plans. How do we feel about our Lord's return? Let us long for that day passionately and earnestly say, Lord, come back. We love you. Please, Lord, come back soon. Looking forward eagerly to the Lord's appearance. The Lord tells us in his word that we are blessed to be looking for our, our, his glorious appearance. We should be, you know, just like, I don't want to say seeking it, but I want to say just having hope in his glorious appearance. There's a blessing for those who long for his glorious appearance. And, oh gosh, you know, what did I say to you guys in one of my most recent Bible studies? Where I was telling you, um, where I don't want to sin because I don't want to offend God. Not because I don't want to have to say, Lord, forgive me. Or because I don't want to go to hell. Or I don't want to be punished by God. That's not why. Because I love him. Go back, if you don't remember, go back through and find my past um Bible studies where I specifically mentioned why I don't like to sin, why I don't like to practice sin, not because, oh, it's a mark against you or you could go to hell for that or now that's something else that you got to account for. It has nothing to do with that. I love him so much. I love my daddy. I love my daddy. Daddy, I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit. 
Why would I want to do that when he's been such a, a such a comfort to me? He's a comforter of my spirit, a comforter of my mind. I love him so much. It's so bittersweet because I can't be with him the way that I want to be with him right now. I'm like a lovesick teenage girl, right? It it reminds me of my layers of fear horror game that I share with you guys, where I change it to layers of no fear. But there's that woman who's just waiting at the lighthouse, waiting for her soldier to return home from war via a boat. And she's just waiting for him and she loves him so much. And, you know, it's a story that I wrote. It's a poem that I wrote. Um, and it just repeats over and over and over. And it leaves you wondering, you know, what's really going on with this woman. Well, that for me, that's me and Jesus. I'm just waiting for him to return because I want to go home. I want to be with him. I want to spend time with the Lord. And I I'd want to spend quality time with him. And the Lord knows what I want to do with him. And it may sound crazy to you, but there are things that I want to do with him. And I know that he knows it and he's confirmed it through other things that have happened. And it's like no coincidence that I know that it is him. And I know what I will be able to do to enjoy his company, to show my love for him. And I look forward to that. I look forward to those things, the personal private things that I will probably one day share, but just not today. Um, my relationship with the Lord is so important to me. It's priceless and it's precious. And I see him and I feel him in everything because I love him. Why do I love him so much? Because he first loved me. He's the one who put love in me. He gave me the love for him. I, I certainly can't do it on my own. Can't do a thing on my own. And that's what I'm talking about. When you can get into that place where you can have that relationship with God. And that ain't easy because it takes trials. It takes tribulation. It takes pain. It is something that is definitely <laughs> earned. You know, it's something where, you know, it it don't come easy. All You know, um, it's a priceless, precious jewel, but you got to dig for it. And it ain't easy. It's been a long road. It's been a long journey. But yes, I want to be with Jesus just because I love him. Even if I have the shabbiest shack in heaven, if I'm still with him, it is okay. It is okay. I'll get over it. I'll deal with it. You understand? Maybe I'll go to somebody else's house. Maybe I'll go visit your mansion because my mansion is shabby. But at least I'm in the presence of the most high God. And that's the important thing because your, your best day in heaven, I mean, excuse me, your best day on earth can't compare to your worst day in heaven. You understand what I'm trying to say? I'm like, no matter how good it can get on earth, it will, it, it wouldn't even hold a candle to a bad day in heaven. You know, because you can't have a bad day in heaven anyway, but it still, it just can't compare, you know, it can't compare. I would rather be, have a bad day in heaven than have an excellent day on earth, you know, because heaven is my goal. Heaven is my home. Heaven is where I belong. And there's nothing on earth that can make me so happy that I would say, I'd rather stay here then go to heaven because I just because I love Jesus, not because I'm looking for my mansion, not because I'm looking for the other things that I asked God for. None of that stuff. It's just because I want to see him and I want to be with him. I want to spend time with him. You know, I want to I just want to ravage him, <laughs> savor him. You know, Take my fingers and run it through his hair. So be it. But just to spend quality time with him. To see him smile. Because he and I are together. 
to feel the love that he has for me. There is a song that I know for a fact was written in heaven. And that is, I can only imagine by mercy me. The moment I first heard that song, I cried like a baby. And every time I would hear that song afterward, I'd cry like a baby. Everyone that hears that song is touched by it. Unless you are a hardcore demon, right? And I actually wanted an atheist to hear that song. I wanted to see if it would move him. You know, he said it didn't. Now, I don't know if it did or not, but he said it didn't phase him at all. Um, So I was like, okay, that's cool. You know, but um, I, I can't listen to that song because I lose my head every time I hear it, you know, and I feel that because I can only imagine what it would be like to be with him, to be with him the way that I need to be with him. And I will be because he said so. And I can't wait. I can't wait to just transition out of here. And and it's just because I love him. So not what else he can give. Just being alive and being happy with him is fine. It's absolutely fine. Cake or no cake, crown or no crown, mansion or no mansion. Just give me my father, my savior, my Holy Spirit, all that he is. I want all of him. All that he has for me that is of him, I want it. I need it. It's my joy. It exceeds my joy. Just thinking about him, my cup runneth over. Literally runneth over. The Lord is the joy and the strength of my life. He's my breath. He's my eyesight. He is my sense of smell and taste. And believe me, he tastes so good. So to see this because I love him, that's all you need. Let that motivate you for the things that you do as unto the Lord in this life. Because you love him. That's it. No more, no less. Because you love him. How can you not love him? He makes me mad. Oh, heck yeah. God can piss me off. He can piss you off. Read the book of Habakkuk. I don't like being here. I don't like this mess. I don't like this thing going on between him and Satan. With him and Lucifer. I don't like it. I wish that he would have never had it to be. I wish he just would have wiped Lucifer and the three forces angels or whatever it was that, that left him. All right, fine. You don't want to be with me. I'm not good enough for you. All right, fine. I'm just going to let you just suffer and burn in this little pit. And you're just going to suffer forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. I'm not even going to give you the pleasure of not existing anymore. I'm just going to let you suffer, 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 suffer. And see everybody else just happy, dappy, dappy. I wish that he could have done that. I really do. And save us all Everybody's waiting on the Lord. All kind of beings from other dimensions and other worlds waiting, waiting for the consciousness of man to wake up, waiting for man to be who they're supposed to be. They're waiting on the Lord is really all they're waiting on. Waiting for God to put an end to the evil. Waiting for God to give us our glorified bodies. And raise us up to be who we are. And everybody's waiting. Everybody's waiting. And uh, the Bible talks about certain, what was it in the Old Testament? Lord, how long we got to wait? How long we got to wait for our brothers and sisters to come on out here? Just wait a little while longer, the Lord. Wait a little while longer, the Lord says. So I can't remember where that scripture is at. But that's the bottom line. We all waiting on the Lord. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Everybody's waiting. You know, and uh, I'm going to be honest with you. I would have wiped everybody out a long time ago, <laughs> but it is what it is. And whether I like it or not, 
He is still my Alpha and my Omega. Though he slay me, yet will I still serve him. I have no choice. That's my daddy. And what daddy say, that it goes. You know, you ain't got to like it. You ain't got to agree with it. But you'll understand by and by. You know, you will understand by and by. So you guys be encouraged on tonight, regardless of what you see in the news, regardless of what's going on with our government, you know, be encouraged no matter what. And don't you don't you be discouraged because God has overcome the world and we're in the world. So we've been overcome, too. And the war is God's. The battle is God's. We're just here fighting for him on his behalf. What an honor. What an honor. So on that note, I'm going to head on out of here. It's 30 minutes and that's the maximum that I want to keep you guys. I hope that you were enriched in these words that um, came from the Lord on tonight. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. Mount up like the wings of eagles. Be steadfast, be strong, and know that you are loved. And no matter what you're going through, come hell high water, love him. Because at the end of the day, he is the only one that can deliver you, love you, save you, and rescue you, and bring you home. So, you guys be blessed. I love you. And I will see you in the next video.